Hey everyone, welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. Hey, if you're new here or you haven't gotten around to it yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Help us feed a hungry hippo. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Today we're doing a jewelry unboxing. I haven't done one of these in a while because it does take me a little time to get through the boxes of jewelry that I buy. Before we get into this box, I'm going to tell you that I purchased all of my jewelry bulk buys or wholesale lots from Whistle Pig Market on Etsy and I have always been completely happy with everything I've gotten from her up to this point. This is Whistle Pig Market on Etsy. She has been so kind as to generate a coupon code for all of my viewers. If you want to purchase anything from Whistle Pig, you can use coupon code HIPPO, H-I-P-P-O, for 20% off any purchase. I'm not an affiliate of hers, but I do get to use the, oh, there's my Poshmark closet. I do get to use the coupon code alongside of all of you, so we all get a discount for purchasing from her. When I first decided in 2024 this was going to be the year of trying new things, I decided jewelry was going to be one of those things I tried. Now, I've never been a jewelry girly, so to speak. I've never worn jewelry. I've never really worn dresses or heels. I'm not a girly girl. But I thought, let's try it. So I bought a one pound box from Whistle Pig. And I had so much fun with that box. And I really enjoy doing jewelry. Even though I don't like to wear jewelry, there's something about organizing it and sorting through it and the pictures and just all of it that is very repetitious almost. It feeds into my need for routines. I do have diagnosed OCD, as most of you know, and I love things with routines, with repetition. That's why I love jeans. I can take a stack of 100 pairs of jeans, put a movie on, and sit there all day. I hyper-focus, and I just love repetition. So jewelry really feeds into that for me. I find it to be really, really fun. I enjoyed that first box as much. Yeah, as much as plush. Or remember the big old box of the Build-A-Bear clothes I got last year? That was so much fun for me. And jewelry was a lot the same. So I then re I ordered again. I graduated from a one pound to three pound box. And then I went to a five. And I just kept ordering more each time. This is a 15 pound box, you guys. 15 pounds of costume jewelry. She advertises it as wearable costume jewelry. Um, in her Etsy store, but she also has a lot of other things in there. Gold tone, jewelry, silver tone. She's got pearls, watches, stuff for crafting. Go ahead and take a look. I'll put her link down below with the code for you guys, and you can order from her if you'd like. I can tell you the reason she created the code was because after my first unboxing, a lot of my viewers do, did go over and purchase jewelry from her to see what all the hype was about. Everybody was really happy with their purchases. She was extremely tickled pink. And so she created the code for us. And a lot, a lot, a lot of my viewers order from her now. And they absolutely love everything they get from her. I can tell you, I've always been pleased. I love the way she packages her stuff. I love the way she sends it. Um, she's fast too. And now she is, I believe, in North Carolina. I did take my address off of here because I don't need stalkers. I watch Dateline, guys. Um, but she's got her P.O. box, North Carolina. So coming from North Carolina to Pittsburgh, it's probably I do get it really quickly. But she ships pretty much the same day, if not the very next day, every time I've ordered. Um, but we're going to delve into this. This is 15 pounds of jewelry. So I don't know how long it's going to take me to go through this. And I know that everyone is busy. You know, your time is valuable. Time is money. Or I don't want to keep you all day. But I also get a lot of feedback from you guys that you like my longer videos. You like my videos that are like 45 minutes to an hour long because you can just put me on in the background while you're taking photos or while you're listing or getting some work done. So that's going to be one of these videos. You want to put me on in the background and you want to go get something to do. Um, but you also want to kind of probably keep an eye on the screen so you can see the jewelry too. So I, what I'm going to do is probably just go until I see the time hits about 45 minutes. And if I'm not through the whole box, we'll just cut it there and kind of like show you what's left. I don't know how much room I really have on my desk for all of this either. So let's make some room. You ready? Let's start with this. Oh my goodness. This is so cool. Um, I can off the top of my head think I should use keywords like tribal or African inspired. These are like discs. 
faux ivory discs. I don't know that I want to use the word ivory, though, because I've heard of people getting um, their stuff taken down just using it as a color descriptor because, you know, ivory is a little. We've got this cool thing. It's a thing. It's a necklace star. That is cool. It's two beads with the heart in it. What is that? Is it like a saber tooth? Tiger tooth? What is? Somebody tell me what this is. I mean, obviously I can Google image it when I go to list, but that is so cool if you know what it is. <laughs> Reminds me of a saber tooth tiger. You see how much fun I have with this stuff? There is a lot of this really big, chunky, chunky, like tribal inspired jewelry in here. This is so cool. This is the kind of stuff that people love. It sells. Look at this. This is a really cool necklace with beads and a pendant. My arm's already tired and we're only a couple minutes in. Woo. Look at this. This is how you can get in shape too. Do you want to tone up your arms and get your arms in shape? Buy a 15 pound box of jewelry and dig through it. <laughs> This is a cool necklace. Look at that. All those different colored beads. So I had something similar to this, and I know I had to look up keywords, and I've already forgotten what they are. But it's like, I don't want to say snake skin. But that's what Google Image is for. I hear a lot of times from folks that they think jewelry is too hard and it's so frustrating because they don't know anything about it and they don't know the key words. You guys, I don't either. I don't know the first thing about jewelry. I just Google image my pictures and other people have similar items or even the same in some instances. And you can see what keywords they're using and you learn as you go. You learn that, you know, these are chunky bead elastic stretchy bracelets. You just learn as you go. It's not that overwhelming. It's really not. Just Google image. See what other folks are calling stuff. Um, like this. I would take a close up of that and Google image it to see what folks are calling it. And then once I do that a couple of times, because I know I've seen that before and it's off the top of my head. And I can't think of it. But once I've seen it a couple of times, I'll remember it. Look at this. Chunky wooden beads. Tribal, African inspired, statement. Those are all really good keywords. If you get into jewelry, you're going to use statement a lot. I put statement on almost every listing on the title, um, unless it's not, you know, statement. But clearly, a lot of this is making a statement. If it's something just like a pearl necklace or something very simple, instead of statement, I'll use a word like elegant. Or evening wear, if I have the room for the word wear, otherwise I just put evenings. You can use cocktail party for some things. I mean, the key words are just like anything else. There is a learning curve, but you can definitely look up other people's listings and see what kind of keywords they're using, what they're calling certain colors and shapes and styles and clasps. Um, look at this. This is like a chunky gemstone necklace. And this is this is kind of cool. I really don't know what to call this, so that'd be something that I'd have to look up. And then as far as pricing it, when you do Google image, that's cool. You can also see the prices of most items, what people are listing them at on the different platforms. Oh, this one's really cool. Um, but I actually don't comp a lot of this um, unless it's something really, really unique. Or when I go to Google Image it, if I see that people, let's say that I saw people were listing this for 50 or 60 bucks. Clearly, I'm going to look it up a little bit more and see if it's going to go for 50 or 60. Um, but prior to getting into jewelry and as I was first getting into it, I picked the brains of a lot of my friends that sell jewelry. I have a lot of friends that go to listing parties. Listing parties are like Zoom calls that you get included with your List Perfectly subscription. And it's just basically resellers getting together to learn and talk and work together. Um, it's included with every with every List Perfectly subscription. It's just a free thing you get with List Perfectly. 
Um, you can try this perfectly, you know, for 30% off your first month. If you use code flip and hippos. If you haven't pulled the trigger yet, I suggest it. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of friends. This is Tangled, so I'll have to work a little bit more on this later. I'll show you. But I have a lot of friends that go to these listing parties that do um, jewelry and uh, several folks that go to my local eBay meetup group that I hold here in Pittsburgh. Uh, we get together once a month locally. This is really cool. This is so neat. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Um, so the eBay meetup group, I am sponsored by eBay. I'm listed on their community group. And so if you're in the area, you can find us and join us at a meeting. But we get together once a month and people in that group sell jewelry as well. So long story long, <laughs> I do have a lot of friends in the reselling community, whether it's through Let's Perfectly or actually people I know in person here in Pittsburgh that do sell jewelry. I really picked their brains. I talked to them a lot. I got a lot of feedback and input. And I have like a basic price chart for jewelry, just like I do for my jeans. If you're familiar with my jeans guide that I sell, I have a basic price guide for a lot of brands of jeans just that I've learned over the years from selling jeans. And so I have like a basic one for jewelry as well that I created based on what all of my experienced jeweler reseller friends have told me. And it's kind of like gut instinct, like a basic bracelet would be something like this. That I would go off of that price chart. A basic necklace has a price, you know, a starting price on that price list. But something like this, I might add five dollars to because it's so unique and so cool. If it's something really simple like a rope bracelet, you want to go down in price. Like this is kind of more of a simple bracelet. So I have like this basic price guide, and I can go up or down by two to five, even ten dollars sometimes, depending on how rare or unique an item is. And so I don't really put that much thought into pricing either. I don't really stress myself out about stuff. Um, I just don't. <laughs> I don't feel like I need to spend hours and hours researching and stressing about comps and trying to find this exact. Is this, this is not a squash blossom, is it? Um, I don't need to find this exact necklace on eBay. I can... Google image, see what other people are calling this. I don't think it's a squash blossom. I think those are shaped differently, but I know it's turquoise. And see what other people are calling it, the keywords they're using. You can see the prices when you Google image. And I can go from my price chart and go from there. You don't really have to spend a lot of time and stress on learning a new niche or a new type of item to sell. Look how pretty that is. Those are pretty. Those are parting. Those there are parting. So I want to show you this. A lot of times, Whistle Pig, if she has a bunch of earrings that she sends you or something um, that has bits and bobs to it, they'll come in their own little Ziploc bags. Some of the jewelry I've gotten from her before. Oh, my goodness, I'm keeping this. <laughs> um, you'll get little bags in there of earrings, and they're not lost within the, ba the box of jewelry. Oh my gosh, I might even wear this. I don't know. I don't really like jewelry. But you guys, it is your destiny. The Millennium Falcon and Star Wars charms. Oh my goodness. I don't even know if you can see them. They're so small, but they're Star Wars. You remember the May the Force be with you necklace I found in one of my lots? Maybe Yoda's wearing it. Maybe he'll wear that bracelet too. Okay. There's so much up in here. Okay, this is a little tangled. So I may have to spend a little bit of time untangling this little bit. It's not too bad though. Um, if you went to my live show last month, that I did solo with no guests. I had a big old box of Tangled jewelry that my friend Karen gave me. Um, she lives here, she's local, I met her at my eBay group. She got a big old Tangled box and she just did not wanna deal with it and it's really bad. I say it's really bad, but if you were there, I was enjoying myself. Um, it's therapy to me. I could just sit there and talk and untangle 
or watch a movie and untangle. Does not bother me at all. It's very soothing. It's therapy. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but this is kind of weird and cool. It's like some plastic flowers and then like a heart. We got, um, this is like a purple rope with like a little knot. This is neat. Everything is either neat or, oh my gosh, that's so cool. So I'm just going to keep saying it over and over. It's kind of like when you watch me unbox Blush and everything I pull out is, oh my gosh, it's cute, it's cute, it's cute. There we go. I got it. Listen, if it's purple, I like it. <laughs> Period. I like everything that's purple. There's so much stuff in this box. Keep on digging and looking. Um, if you guys have questions about jewelry, let me know in the comments. I do have um, some charts that are helpful with keywords and describing jewelry that one of the viewers sent me. Um, I should put them in my Facebook group. I should actually make a video about how easy jewelry can actually be if you just Google image and don't overthink it. I think that a lot of people do overthink a lot of things. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I get a message from someone that spent, oh, I spent hours or days on this one plush and like, you really shouldn't. If you can't find it, I guess you get to set the price, right? Look at that. That is really super cool. Kind of ugly, but you know what? Ugly spells. And I learned that from selling clothing. Ugly spells. We got a big mess here. So I'm going to try to work through it. And I can't. But during this video, we'll just kind of hold it up and look at, look at some of it. This is a couple of things stuck together, I believe. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, this looks like it's one necklace with many strands. Got a flower. Again, when I go to take the pictures, I always kind of sit here and really make sure that everything's untangled and ready for their photo shoot. Oh, this one's neat. This box has got a lot of really cool stuff in it. So neat. That's the other fun part, is like all the really different items that you find in here. They're just, they're just so, I don't know. I don't want to use the word random, but because I'm not a jewelry wearer. I mean, maybe things are in style. I don't know. I don't wear jewelry, but these are cool. Is this more than, is this one thing? What is happening here? <laughs> is this one thing? I believe it is. It's like all one Again, I'll have to fiddle fart around with this and make sure all the strands are laying nicely and not tangled for the photo shoot. But this is kind of cool. This is like a multi-strand beaded necklace. Look at me with my keyword. This is something. <laughs> wow, this is long. So what I do personally when I get really long necklaces like this, I will get a picture of it all long, but it won't be my main image. My main image on the on the listing will be having it like a double strand because I really think that's how most people would wear it is like a double strand. So my main image will be this, and then I will show it, you know, long. And I always take a picture of each piece of jewelry next to my measuring tape, just like I do with plushies, just so they can get an idea of the general length of the necklace or, you know, how big an earring is or whatever. There's some delicate wire jewelry in here. Um, this is neat. So a lot of this story is going to have the keyword statement, statement, statement. Oh, this is really cute. No, it's not cute. It's pretty. I like those tiny, like, clear purple beads. Pink, not purple. Got purple on my mind. So this is all one thing. 
Yeah, I don't have to fill apart around. I have to start putting some jewelry on the back side of me from another room over here. We got a, oh wow, this is so cool. It's all tangled up. Let go. Let go. I don't think it's going to let go. All right, that's going to have to have, I'm going to have to go in real delicately to get that untangled and it's stuck down in here. Oh, the beads are escaping. That's okay. Once in a while, and by once in a while, I mean like twice ever in one of her boxes, I had something like that where, this is called, this is called a bib, by the way. I did learn that. Something like that can be called a bib. Um, I had like, this is the second time that I had something where the beads were escaping off of a wire. And sometimes I find like little broken bits or bobs or just pendants. And I'm saving all of that in a box by itself. Um, and when that box eventually fills up of just little bits, bobs, beads, pieces, parts, broken bits, I am going to start crafting and making my own um, brooches and stuff. I'm learning how to do that from my friend Dawn. And I have other friends that craft with the jewelry. Um, and you can make your own brooches and you can sell them for a good amount of money, like maybe 40 bucks. For one brooch that you save, you know, you maybe rescue two pieces of three pieces of broken jewelry, maybe, maybe four if you make a big one. Um, so it's stuff that most people would throw away and you can sit and craft and then you can sell it. Alternatively, if you don't want to craft, you can just save up all those broken bits and pieces in a box. And when you have a full box full that, you know, the box is sturdy enough that you can ship in and stuff, you can weigh it. So you know the weight, and then you can list it as crafting um, parts, crafting jewelry. Um, I forget what Whistle Pig calls it. Bag of crafting material, mater bag of crafting material and jewelry making supplies mixed lot. That's what she calls it. Um, I've seen other sellers sell, you know, just bag of broken jewelry bits for crafting or DIY jewelry. So you don't have to be a crafter, but I definitely would not throw away if you find this one has all kinds of really cool charms on it. Let me hold it down here so that you can see it. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, amateur hour here at the Flipping Hippos channel. You see the fish? He's cute. But yeah, if you find like pendants that don't have a home, necklace, beads, broken parts, Save them up, even if you're not crafty or you're not so inclined to learn how to be crafty, because you can still sell those to someone who is. So this kind of just goes back to what I'm always saying about pinch every single penny you can out of the lots that you buy. Just like with my philosophy on lifting the poopy items and getting all those pennies and making all that profit, you don't want to throw away broken pieces of jewelry either. This is thick. Thick boy. <laughs> thick boy necklace. Um, because you can either craft it yourself or you can sell it to other crafters. Um, there's no sense in throwing stuff away. Like seriously. I literally just put out a video about why why we do that, why we pinch every penny out of wholesale lots, and how we deal with when we get poopy items or less than desirable brands. In fact, I'll link that at the end. If you haven't seen that, you can go ahead and give that a watch, too. Look at this. Gemstones. Chunky. It's got a toggle clasp. Again, amateur hour. My camera is not down here. It's up here. It's got a toggle clasp. See that? I learned that, too. I've been learning stuff about some jewelry. We've got... Oh, this is cool. This is like a big... You see this? So, I'm not going to sit here on the video and untangle this with you guys, but this doesn't look too bad. This looks like it's going to be just a simple untangling of all of this jewelry. This is nowhere, nowhere near what my friend Karen gave me to work on. I also heard that 
the Goodwill Blue Box boxes of jewelry are notorious for just sending you big honking boxes, <laughs> blobs of just cute. Look at this. It's a little handbag. You see it? Isn't it cute? Oh my goodness, that is the cutest little pendant. A little blue handbag. Um, yeah, I heard that the Goodwill just sends like, like what my friend Karen gave me, if you saw that in the live show, just the huge tangled things that take forever to work on. I will say that most of Whistle Pig stuff, if you just pull it out and just kind of like work it like that, most of it will come right apart. This is neat. They're like magnetic. See that? That's cool. Magnetic. Magnetic. I see something really neat here. Look at that. I love the really unique stuff like that. Um, it is a little harder for me to come up with keywords sometimes on the really unique stuff. But the more unique it is, and if you take really good photos, the more likely it is to sell more quickly, number one. And number two, you can ask for more money. You just got to make sure you take all your pictures. So this is stuck to something else, which is like a pink tennis bracelet, which I'll have to work. I have to like take it apart, I think, to get it off. But this is a, see, like that is a really unique piece. And again, while sometimes, you know, I have to Google image and really look for really good keywords as long as you take really good pictures i mean you can ask for more money and they're more likely to sell just make sure you have the good keywords make sure you have really good photos and it doesn't hurt if you have you know good feedback on ebay and if you do all the best business practices like run sales do offers you can always list things higher so you can do that so this is a really cute bracelet, which I'm trying to close the clasp on, and I'm not. I don't have my glasses on either, so I can't see anything. I put my glasses on. I don't even know where they are. I really don't. <laughs> They're not on my desk. Anyway, I think it's cute. It's like Jingle Bells bracelet for Christmas. I don't know where my eyeballs went. They're probably in on my vanity, on my in the bedroom, because I literally just did my makeup to record videos today. Oh, does anybody else like forget to put their glasses on after a shower or doing makeup and get like halfway through your day or partway through your day? Maybe you're listening, maybe you're taking photos, wondering why can't I see anything? Why am I blind? And then you're like, oh, yeah, my glasses are on. Is it just me? Does everybody else just remember to put them on right away? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Do you see the pig? <laughs> Do you see the cute pig? Oh my goodness. The pig is Oh, now it won't focus on me. Come on. Come on, camera. There we go. We got a necklace. We've got a necklace, guys. This is such a professional channel with top of the line editing and cameras that never focus. And somebody who remembers her glasses and can actually see what she's doing. This is my dog. Can you tell? <laughs> Listen, I've said it before. This is neat. And I will say it again. I don't. Oh, that one's really pretty. I don't. That one's really, really pretty. I don't really consider myself a content creator or a YouTuber. And I don't like the word influencer at all. I'm a reseller. Who sometimes makes videos about the stuff I resell. 
about the stuff I sell. I just sometimes make videos about what I'm doing and try to teach other people about what I learned and what I know. This one's really pretty. Um, so yeah, I'm just a reseller who sometimes makes videos. I ain't trying to be no professional. At the end of the day, my number one priority and job is reselling, which I love. I love my job. I hope everybody else loves their job too. And I talk about that on the channel a lot, how this job can be different, so many different things to different people. And you just have to make it what you need it to be for your situation. Whatever your situation is, as long as this job fits your situation, like, good for you. I hope you're happy because I sure am. I don't ever have to leave the house <laughs> to get everything delivered. I get to sit in my office. Go for walks, make my own schedule. I really like this. I really like, I would never wear any of this, honestly. But some of it is just so, like, attractive to me. Like, that is really pretty. Would I wear it? No. Do I like looking at it and thinking it's pretty? Yes. There's still so much more in this box. What is this? It looks like a lion. Is that a lion? Somebody who remembers to put their glasses on told me. <laughs> um, that's got a little cross on it. And we've got some other jumbled stuff up in here, which I'll have to work through. There's like a little ball of a chain. But see how easy that came apart? That was like all balled up and it just kind of came right apart. So her stuff is nowhere near as bad as I've seen from Goodwill and other places as far as Tangled. That's pretty. See, and that's another thing I don't worry about, like, with rings. I just put one size because I'm selling costume jewelry. Now, if I was selling actual real gold and diamond rings and engagement rings and wedding bands and Tiffany's, of course I want to worry about what size the rings are. But most of the rings I get are bow gold, rhinestone, or acrylic. They're just costume jewelry. So I just put one size. You can if you want to be. A completionist, a little bit more concerned with details than me. You can get a ring sizer, you know, size rings. But I mean, again, if it were real jewelry and it was expensive, I would concern myself with that. But not for costume jewelry. Know what I mean? Oh, this is cool. Let me try to get it out of here. Uh, that's pretty so when I was little my grandma had these two wooden they look like little they were about this big but they were wooden and they had hinged lids that opened and they looked like pirate chests they put goals on them and stuff they looked like little mini pirate treasure chests and she had both of them were full of just costume jewelry and whenever I stayed with my grandma, I was allowed to go through all the boxes and play with it. And even I can remember back then as a little girl, I would go through those boxes and I would be fascinated. A snap bracelet. Um, I would be fascinated with all the jewelry and maybe try it on once in a while. Like every once in a while, you'll see me do that. And I would look at it for hours and just examine it. But... It wasn't like I wanted to wear it or dress up. Like most little girls would want to play dress up. That wasn't me. I just remember I liked looking at it. Like I do this. I just wanted to see it. I don't know. I can appreciate beauty. That doesn't mean I want to wear it, I guess. <laughs> I just am comfortable. Um, when I'm at home, I'm comfortable in my graphic tee and my pajama bottoms. And when I go out, it's graphic tees and t-shirts. I like tennis shoes. 
I've always liked tennis shoes. I have to wear tennis shoes now because of my bad back. Like, I really can't get away with boots or even flip-flops for long periods of time. I need the really good support of a really good pair of sneakers. Um, but I do, like, wear flip-flops if I'm just running to the store real quick or whatever. But I'm not a dressed-up kind of girl. I'm not. What is this? I mean, I know that this is clearly feed, but whatever it was attached to, maybe we'll get to it. There is still a ton of stuff in here. A ton of stuff. This is something I want to run through my Sonic jewelry cleaner. Just because it looks a little dingy. Um, with the Sonic jewelry cleaner, I can link that in the description box. I'll do that for you guys. You want to be careful with what you put in there. The one I bought is pretty inexpensive. It has a little basket you can put stuff in. Um, you can put it in like a drop of soap. That's I use it on just soap. Or, you know, the Walmart version of it. Um, but you want to put in just like metal jewelry. So if it's obviously painted, um, a lot of the acrylics and stuff you don't want to put in there. So you want to be careful. You don't want to put in these painted pieces of jewelry and stuff. I try to just put in the metal pieces and the other, like this kind of stuff, I wouldn't put in there. But I can squirt one squirt of awesome on a paper towel and just wipe those down. You can even use alcohol. I have friends that use alcohol, but it worries me because of the paint. Again, a lot of the costume jewelry has paint on it. And I don't know if alcohol would be a good idea, but you have to discern that for yourself. But there are ways to clean it and wipe it down without a jewelry cleaner if it's something that shouldn't go in one of those. But a lot of stuff can. So, oh my gosh, this is really pretty. Guess why? Because it's purple. It's purple and black. I love purple and black together. It's my favorite. This is a little gold teardrop. Me. Look at that. This is like, um, it reminds me of like Chinese dragon jewelry. And again, I would just get a real good close up shot of that and Google image it and see what other people are calling it. Occasionally, I find the exact piece of jewelry I'm listing. And that's always great. And other times I can just kind of get some good keywords. This is kind of ugly, which, again, ugly sells. Ugly sure does sell. This must have come off of there, so I will see if I can get it back on myself. Shouldn't be too hard. Shouldn't be too hard. Ooh. That's neat. Yeah, again, <laughs> again, just because you can see it, Star, doesn't mean your viewers can. Doesn't mean you're holding it up to the camera correctly. Hey, guys, look at this. <laughs> oh, look at this. Can you see it? Can you see it? Look at it. <laughs> just That's neat. I have a box in here. Ooh. Um, Treasure de la Mer, Sterling Silver. Hmm. So this is a Sterling Silver ring. And it's meant to have interchangeable. Okay. So because this box actually says sterling silver on it i can say sterling silver normally i just say silver tone because i don't it costume jewelry and i don't know but anyway that middle bead does come out and then you can replace it with all these different colors and every single bead is there which is great so this is not missing any parts it has all the different beads the white is a little dingy I don't know if I would take a cloth to that. Maybe a microfiber cloth and just try to wipe off that white 
and get the dust off uh, dry. I wouldn't make it damp or put any cleaner on it. Just a microfiber cloth to wipe off that white velvety um, piece. And then there's a ribbon here you pull. There's directions. So it's got the instructions and everything that came with the original ring. So this is really cool. MSRT on this is 40 bucks. So I might try to sell it for like 25, 30. Of course, I will look it up and comp it because it may be old and people are selling it for more than 40 at this point. So that's really a nice find in here. This is everything happens for a reason. There are no mistakes. It's a bracelet or like a cuff. We are coming in at the 45 minute mark, guys. So I'm going to show you a couple more pieces. I mean, there is still so much more in here. There is so much more in here. This one's really pretty. But we've been sitting here for about 45 minutes. And you can see how much is still in there for me to go through. There's just so much jewelry. And here's one of the bags I was talking about. So in a smaller Ziploc bag, she's got earrings in here. And so when I get to this bag, I can just dump this out across my table, see what these wipes and clean, what can go to the jewelry cleaner, and then pair them up with their mates and take the photos. I love that she does that. This is cool. Yeah, there is so, so much in here. This is a big box. It was 15 full pounds. This is really pretty. Look at that. That that definitely would get keywords like boho, maybe 70s fashion. Can you use the word hippie? Is that still politically incorrect or what? I don't know. That's nice. But yeah, there's still so much in here. Oh, look at that. So I will definitely be going through this slowly but surely. Um, jewelry gets listed kind of slowly around this house. But it does eventually get photographed and listed. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about anything you saw in this video or reselling in general, let me know. I will put the Whistle Pink Market link down below. Code HIPPO to get 20% off. And I will put my jewelry cleaner um, link in there. And it's an affiliate link. So if you purchase it, you will be helping us out and giving me a couple pennies. All right, guys. Go be proactive. Go make some money. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.